And we're live, ladies and gentlemen. Apologies for the delay. Uh, there were some not so major technical issues with uh, none of the Discord bots thinking I'm streaming. Uh, but we're live. Uh, those of you who have been at previous shows might have noticed that I fixed the wall behind me. Uh, there is now more acoustic foam. Whether that's doing something, uh, that's for you guys to decide with the next video which is going to be either Monday or the Monday after that. Anyway, welcome back to the Com Relay. Today uh, on the Com Relay, we're going to discuss with any guests that show up. Uh, so far, no one's waiting. So if you are uh, if you want to be on the Com Relay with me, uh, hop into the Armory Discord server and then into the waiting ro room uh, voice channel. And we will uh, talk, about, talk about the topic of the day, which today is underrated ships that need some love. Uh, and I think this is actually a very relevant topic uh, with the recent news on the Retaliator, uh, which those of you who haven't uh, caught that, and I think it's now on, on the roadmap. Uh, I, th I think it's on the roadmap now. But uh, they are working on ship modularity, and the first modular ship that is going to become modular is going to be the Retaliator. And they said that they're going to implement the bomber module, the cargo module, and I think they said the dropship module. And as far as I know right now, it's supposed to all happen in 323 at some point. Which, on one, on one hand, great. Because this is something that a lot of people have been waiting for. On the other hand, uh, where are they going to fit this in 323? There is so much happening in 3.23 already. Uh, how, CAG? And I, I, I think, I don't know. I, I hope they make it. I, But I think it's one of the things that's going to get pushed into a 3.23x patch. The second thing being distribution centers. Uh, I don't know if you guys have tried distribution centers uh, in the latest EPTU. I know they're not the testing focus and they're not implemented, uh, but they are kind of weird. Uh, because normally I would expect them to like, oh yeah, this location is not done, so we have limited access to them so that you can't get stuck, but now you can actually get stuck uh, because some of the doors on the inside, they only open one way, but don't open the other way, and you still can get uh, missions to, to distribution centers, which... I don't know. We will see. I, I think it's going to be a 323X patch. Uh, maybe CIG are going to prove me wrong, as they have been proving me wrong uh, for the better part of Q1 this year. So uh, very excited for that. But anyway, between talking about underrated ships, uh, what I think I'm going to do on stream today is I'm going to show you guys the new armory. Uh, some of you might have heard me talk about it before. Most of you probably haven't. Uh, but I am working on a, number one, redesign of the armory. So there is now a fully new UI to the armory. I finished that yesterday, uh, minus some minor changes that still need to be done. And I'm going to do that tomorrow with the designer of the armory. Yes, the armory now has a designer. So uh, Lens Nation is joining me on the armory team. And you have seen Lens Nation on the Discord and generally in my comments and all that stuff. Uh, he made a beautiful design for the armory. Uh, and I, that's what I've been working on for the past two weeks. The other things coming to the armory are a little bit more exciting. And that's going to take a couple more weeks to do. Uh, so the armory is now going to have user accounts. Why is that space? Why, why do we need user accounts? Uh, because it is a prerequisite for some of the other things I would like to do. Uh, one of which I would like to give people more control over their shared or saved loadouts. Uh, not necessarily editing them, but being able to change the name and the link yourself. That's something I would like to do or delete them when you don't need them anymore. So this layer of management on it. Second, uh, I am looking, and I posted this on Discord before I realized I'm going to have to do a couple more things before I get this done. Uh, the Armory is going to have a, a working name is Data Bounties. 
uh, essentially where it will allow me to put out a bounty for people to go and find out information on what items are sold where or find where an item is being sold. And I'll be able to pay them with uh, Alpha UEC. And for this, I, I thought I could wing it, uh, but I realized that that's a terrible idea and I should stop trying to do that. So that's going to be pushed through the Armory accounts. And that actually provides a layer of verification for the user who's submitting. That way they can't put in a wrong handle, for example. So I will be able to send the money. And thanks to that, since they're going to have an account, they will be able to view their submissions for bounties and they'll be able to see if they have been approved, rejected, whatever. At the same time, it also will allow them to view any outstanding payment claims for like, let's say you submit a data bounty for the armory. Uh, I accept it. And then that creates a payment claim. So I have to pay you however many alpha UEC that bounty was worth. Now, so that's the one, that's the next thing you're going to be able to view. And that kind of steps it into where if this system becomes well used, I would like to look into extending this and allow other people to create data bounties and sort of splitting that off into its own application. But that's something that's very far in the future, depending on how things go. Uh, you know me, real life happens and uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, we got a little bit off track there, but off, off track on, on an important topic that I wanted to cover. Uh, anyway, so I, while we're waiting for callers, uh, again, if, if you want to join me and talk about uh, ships that you think are underrated, uh, hop on the Armory Discord. Hop in the waiting room and uh, we, will, uh, we will get you set up and we will get you started. Uh, so I have two underrated, well, one and one that needs a, needs a gold standard. Uh, the underrated ship for me is the Gladiator. Uh, for those of you who don't know, because it's uh, apparently it's actually a very uncommon ship, uh, which I, <laughs> I haven't, I, I didn't know that it's very uncommon, pretty much uh, until I think the first or second run of Xenothreat, where I was like, oh, I would like a bomber, but I don't want to use an Eclipse because it's not very good in a dogfight, uh, but I don't want to use a Harbinger because it was too expensive. And there, someone told me, like, oh, buy a Gladiator. I was like, Gladiator what? Uh, so the Gladiator is a medium fighter bomber, which is uh, supposed to be the fighter bomber companion to the Hornet, I believe. Uh, it was either the Hornet or the or the Lightning. I'm not, I don't remember the, the lore specifically. Uh, it's got pilot-controlled size 3 guns. In, in 322, I don't know if they're, they're going to bump that up to size 4 in 323. It's got size 3 dual turret for a gunner. So you have a gunner. And it's got, I think, size 5 torpedoes on it and, and a couple missiles. So it actually has a pretty reasonable loadout for, for the size. And the difference there between the Gladiator and the Harbinger is that, A, the Harbinger has more guns. And B, the Harbinger has interior, where the Gladiator is kind of a lighter platform in a way that it doesn't have interior. And this ship has been sitting unused and unbalanced by CIG for pretty much since it was released, which is probably before my time in Star Citizen, because I would have registered that it was released if it had been released when I was playing Star Citizen. Uh, so... Yeah, that, I think that that's a ship that needs a rework and that needs a rebalance and a gold standard. Uh, I think what they could do with it is, so it's more on par with uh, the Harbinger, is pretty much just increase the size of the guns and, and the capacitor. Uh, I think that that's going to be more than enough. It's got four or six size five torpedoes in there. So it's it's got a pretty good torpedo loadout. Uh, I don't think that needs to change. I think it's it also has some missiles along with the torpedo. So I, I think it's pretty good. I think it's good where, where it is. And my second ship, and it's not really underrated because everybody uses it, 
uh, and a lot of people like it. So it's not really underrated, but I think it's a ship that needs some love. And that is obviously the Constellation series. Uh, and everyone's like, is, is, your question is going to be, Space, what is your problem with the Connie? The Connie is perfect. My problem with the Connie is that, so you got the Aquila, the exploration variant. So now let's say that you are actually taking it exploring, pathfinding, and you're going to the unknown for weeks at a time. Can you imagine being there with three other, other people in that little crew compartment area in there? Where basically the bathroom is in the kitchen and the kitchen is basically in the bedroom and there's four of you in there? That's, you know, cabin fever. It's, you know, it's, it's given me claustrophobia just thinking about being there with three other people for an extended period of time. Other than that, you know, the Connie is a, is actually a great, great platform on its own. It's got good visibility uh, from the cockpit. I know some of you are going to argue that it struts everywhere, and I will agree with you, but uh, it's still got good visibility. You can look around, and it's got basically almost a 180 view from the pilot seat last time I flew it. Uh, it's actually a good size for exploration sort of medium cargo roles so it's it's got a shit ton of cargo space for for the size that it is uh it is semi well maneuverable in my opinion like it does fly like a brick but it could be worse there there are ships that fly worse and they're smaller looking at you mole uh and you know versatility for me uh, because it's got what we got four variants of the Kani. We got the Andromeda, the Aquila, and the Phoenix. So three. I, I, I'm not, not counting the Emerald because that's a Phoenix. It's just green. Uh, so we got actually Taurus. Yes, we got the Taurus. Uh, so we do have four Kani variants. So you got great flexibility on it because the, the different variants of the Kani they got different turrets actually, and different cargo elevators and and all that stuff. So what I think they need to do with the Kani when they bring it to gold standard is that they probably Jason I agree the Connie Taurus when when it came out uh that was the time I considered where I was like you know what maybe maybe I would like this Connie that that may be because I didn't because I have an MSR and I think the MSR is better uh but the the Taurus is amazing. You you can basically fit two Ursas in there because it's got that basically double cargo elevator and two or maybe three cyclones if if you try hard enough. It's and my kind of favorite thing that doesn't work but it's pretty cool on the Connie Taurus is that it has uh, that rear compartment. Uh, it's got that shielded cargo area in there. And I don't remember if it if it has a snub fighter, but I don't think it, it does. And it has a cargo beam, and it has a tractor beam in, in the bottom turret. That's that's what I'm talking about with the module turrets on there. Uh, yeah, you know, 600i, obviously, you're going to prefer a 600i over Connie, right? Because it, it is simply sort of a different class of ship. But I think the 600i also has a lot of untapped potential. Like, the thing that pisses me off about the 600i, which they are going to fix with the rework, is that there is a ton of basically just wasted space in there. And I know it's supposed to be a luxury ship where it's kind of like, you know, supposed to show off your wealth because you can uh, you can have a bunch of uh, environmentally sealed area that's used for nothing in space. Uh, but it's also an exploration ship. So you need to manage your available space in a way that all of it is used. One second. I I talk too much and then I, then my mouth gets dry. Uh, so that's that's my problem with it. And what I think they're gonna do with the rework, one they said they're gonna make it bigger, which I don't think is necessarily needed for what they want to do with it. Uh, but they are going to address a lot of these unused areas and they're gonna give them a purpose. So that's, there's gonna be storage. Uh, they're adding a med bay that there is exactly the armory on the 600i it's 
and that actually brings me to my second point on the 600i, which is the layout. It, it makes no sense how you move around that ship. I, I know that it's done because that middle section is, is modular, essentially, where you can just pop out the exploration, you know, the, the, the elevator and the scanning room and pop in the habitation module for, for transport. But I don't see why it has to have that kind of... Why, if I need to go to the rear section of the ship on the Touring 600i, why do I have to go into the main room, go downstairs, and then go through the main area, and then go upstairs to kind of get up to the bar? Why do I need to do that? So I think they're going to fix that also with the rework. They're going to add the medical room. I, I think they said they're going to add, add a med bay, which I... I believe it should have been in the original concept because they do have an empty room. There is an empty room on the 600i that uh, I think should have been the medical bay, but they decided to not put it in there because of reasons. And another thing I hope they're going to fix is the crew quarters on the 600i, uh, which, sure, it looks great, but basically you got a barrack for the for the crew in a big empty room where i think if you arranged it in a smart way and maybe you know took out a little bit of the empty hull space you could probably give everyone a room with a a, a bathroom in there because it's a big enough crew quarters room even if you like took out the shared bathrooms and extended the crew quarters so that everybody can have their own bathrooms. Uh, I, I think that would be a way forward with the 600i. Because there is enough floor space on that ship, in, in my humble opinion. Uh, I think just CIG used it wrong. And, you know, I, I'm not even opposed to, like, having a shared bathroom, but, like, even the Corsair has individual rooms for, for crew members. Uh, so if Drake can do it, I, I'm sure Origin can. And I know, you know, it's it's a... It's a crew members on, on essentially a luxury yacht. 800i has individual rooms. So so can the 600, I think. Even when you think about it, on the 400i, you have two rooms. So you have kind of the captain and the two crew members split. So And even, even on the 400i, I would argue that the crew members could have separate rooms. Because there is enough room on that ship. And I, I know, I have a 400i. So I would know. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we got off on a tangent uh, about the 600i because that, that ship infuriates me with, with how it is designed. Uh, just why CAG? It looks cool. Like from the outside, it looks amazing. From the inside, you're just like, why? Why why this? Why does it work this way? But what they should do with the Connie is uh, I would retain kind of the forward layout. I would retain the bridge as it is maybe move the door a little bit forward. I don't, I don't think it needs to have that empty space, but maybe there's going to be something in there. You know, we, we're going to have engineering consoles, so they might add more seats there or, you know, more important stuff that that's that can go there. Uh, but what I would do on the rear of the ship, I would remove all the living spaces from the middle section for where the elevator is. I would do an armory there like a gear storage room so there would be our you know uh, armor lockers uh weapon lockers you know general equipment storage in there because that's kind of your entry point to the ship so that's that's where you need that stuff and the most overhaul i would do is basically to the rear section where the cargo hold is um is that it would probably require that they raise it a little bit to do this and sort of get rid of the airlocks Possibly, but I don't think that's necessary to get rid of the side airlocks, which, yeah, they're, they're kind of useful. Uh, but what I think they should do there is basically raise that area and put the crew quarters in there. Even if they have, like, lowered ceilings in, in there. They could put, you know, the crew mess in there, sort of where the landing is, so they would move the door forward a little bit. Put, like, the crew mess in there, like the common areas, and then in a raised area with lowered ceilings... Uh, they would have the crew quarters. So you can just kind of like crawl in there, or not crawl in there, but you, you know, you walk up, get into your bunk, and, and you're done. Uh, 
I, I think that's that's what they should do. And that way they could probably retain the airlocks and sort of properly airlock them. So they have a proper airlock in there, so two doors, and retain sort of a hallway into the engineering section all the way in the rear with the snuff fighter. To me, that's that's how it would make sense on Akani. Uh, if they did this, they essentially wouldn't have to make any changes to the Phoenix. Uh, or, well, they... Okay, my gripe with the Phoenix. It looks great. It is... It looks better than some Origin ships. Like, it looks better than the 800i on the interior. But your guests, when you're on loading on guests, they are going essentially through the crew area. So you have to walk through the crew bathroom to get into the guest area. That's my number one problem. My second problem is that there is only one bathroom on that ship, which is the, I, I believe ship builders call it a wet head, where you have a toilet, but you also have a shower, but it's all waterproof, so you can shower in there. That's the only bathroom on the Phoenix, as far as I know. Unless there's one hidden away in the door that doesn't open, there is no other bathroom on the Phoenix, which which pisses me off. So CAG would have to do some layout gymnastics there to both have a separate entrance, possibly. So they, they could possibly do a second elevator in there somehow. Uh, or move the crew quarters in a way where you can retain the elevator, but you have a nicer entry. Or, you know, fine, let's board the guests in, you know, through the crew quarters. We don't care. But let's put a second bathroom somewhere in the back. Uh, I don't know how CAG wants to do this. I, I think the ship as it is makes no sense. Uh, still a great ship, though. If you need to... It's got a lot of seats. It's, it's got, like... 15 or 20 seats in the Phoenix where you can like sit down. So uh, I think you know, perfect ship if you, you need to transport a bunch of people from A to B. Not necessarily if you need them to actually stay there for, for a long time. So, but at that point, if they say like, oh, it's not meant for being on a, on a journey for several days as a guest, uh, then my logical next suggestion is going to be okay. Well, let's remove the guest rooms and let's uh, and let's just have either bunks or like an enclosed bunks type thing, or just have seats, essentially, and and a bar. And you know, if you're not there for an overnight stay, then why is there a hot tub? Generally, you know, it's. Good ship, just I have a lot of questions on the design. And, and you know, I might ask some of these questions because I, I, I don't know if you guys noticed or read it on Discord. I did manage to score CitizenCon tickets. Uh, so I'm going to be at CitizenCon in October. I got my hotels and my... I don't have my flights yet, but I, I will get on my flights uh, probably next month uh, because the prices are kind of not great right now. And I'm hedging that they're going to be a little bit better. Uh, but yeah, I, I will be at CitizenCon, hoping to see at least some of you there. You will recognize me, hopefully, uh, either by my face or the Armory t-shirt, if if, I, if I'm if i going to have an Armory t-shirt. Uh, I haven't decided on the dress code yet. But but I'm uh, I'm told it's, it's, it's very casual in there. Uh, I don't have a premium ticket. Uh, a, couldn't get one in the early access waves. Uh, B, don't want to refund my ticket to get the premium one now because they're actually now available. They got the premium and the regular ticket available for sale. It's not uh, out of stock right now, uh, which makes me think they either made the early access waves very small, which would make sense because it's early access. So, uh, you know, for limited limited type thing or maybe they saw how much demand there is for these and they converted a bunch of regular tickets into the premium admission uh, you never know with CAG uh, I can get uh, yeah so the Jason fully agree with you on on that uh, for the last three citizen cons I've 
I basically couldn't go uh, because it was in Austin and I was a broke college student back then, <laughs> so I couldn't go. Uh, then it was in Manchester and I was still a broke college student, so I couldn't go. Uh, then they skipped uh, for two years. They didn't have a citizen gone for two years. And they had one in LA last year. And there I kind of did the math on how much it would cost for me to go from Czech Republic to LA, be in LA for a little while, uh, and then go back. And it came down to like four to six months of my salary. Uh, and at that point I was buying an apartment that I was like, uh, you know what, I'm, I'm going to pass this year, uh, because it's not financially prudent to do all of these things at once. Uh, plus getting to LA from, uh, from here is, it's extremely painful. Uh, the best I could get was two layovers, which I would rather not. So I, if I would d definitely like to go to a citizen con in the U S at some point. Uh, but I will probably join it with some other travel to the U.S. So I'm not basically going to the U.S. for three days for CitizenCon, because that that sounds like a lot of jet lag for for three days of an event. Uh, so I probably, you know, put in some other travel in there, that kind of stuff. Uh, because that's that's what I'm doing with the CitizenCon actually. I'm uh, I'm going to London. I'm gonna see London after many years, and then I'm gonna be in Manchester for a couple of days just to see. Manchester. Uh, I don't know if there's anything to see there, uh, but I, I hope so. Uh, so I'm kind of doing more than just citizen con essentially. Uh, you know, gotta use that paid time off for for something. Uh, oh, Lens Nation is in the waiting room. Okay, let's uh, let's uh, let's let's get him in. Uh, Lens Nation, you're you're on air. Can can we hear you? Hey, isn't it a? Are you burning hello? midnight oil? Hello, hello, hello. Oh, sorry. Push the talk. Uh, good good evening or good good night. Uh, isn't it like super super late for you right now? I I can't hear you, man. What? Sorry, I'm calling from a cell phone. Um, I just woke up in the middle of night and your stream was on, if you can hear me. Uh, we can hear you, yes. I, I can oh. hear you. I don't know why you, you can't hear me. So we can hear you. The stream can hear you. <laughs> oh, I can. Okay, I can hear you now. There okay, I had to keep you on. Yes, I can hear you now. Oh, there we go. I, we, we couldn't sleep tonight. <laughs> and I just, yeah, neither me nor my wife, and she is having breakfast at eight one a.m. right now. I mean, and it's morning. I, it's breakfast yeah. time, you know. Uh, so I, I support this. <laughs> and I suddenly realized it's your stream. Her stream is happening right now, and I saw you on air and I just, just came to Discord. I, I, I'm not watching YouTube. I just came here. Well, we will uh, welcome. Uh, do you know what the, what the topic of the day is? I know your topic is um, the ships, the underrated ships. Yes. Yeah, so, so what is your underrated ship that needs love? I think Nomad is the one. Really? Why is that? It's, it's fairly new. <laughs> It's new and it can do everything, but I don't see much of them around in the wars. I I rarely, you know, when I see a nomad around, I, my face lights up. That's true, though. Oh, I there's a nomad. That's true. I don't see a lot of nomads out there. Uh, I think. Yeah. I wonder why, though. I, I think it might have to do. They, they kind of had like a very weak launch on the Nomad, in, in my opinion, where everyone was like, oh, yeah, cool. And, and nobody used it. And then then they had issues with the cargo ramp where it would just drop vehicles oh. if you would fly. So I think a lot of people either stopped using theirs or, or melted it. And now it's, yeah. it never quite made a comeback, which 
which I think it will eventually when uh, you know solo exploration is is a thing. Like um, I think I've seen more C ones and C twos and those bigger ships out there as compared to a Nomad. And I, I wasn't there for the launch, so I do not know how it went when they launched it. Um, but I knew I know the problems were there. But those problems have been solved with the cyclones and everything stays in in the ship now. But but it has a problem. It sort of crashes these days, like just in in the in the atmosphere it just decides just, to die. It just dies. However, it has the biggest benefit of having a nomad is that the ship just locks itself your cargo based exterior and it's just ridiculously good to like if you're doing bunker looting it is is what you're doing it is a wonderful ship to do that you can just really like you know if you want to take the nine tails bodies uh, up the elevator and uh, you can just throw them in the flatbed yeah loot them there easiest access because i know i did this along i'm speaking from experience you want to have your boxes that you want to carry with you this is your ship it it it's so good and so functional when it comes to all those things yeah. and it has the best view man one of the best cockpits yeah that's why it's an yeah, underrated Jason ship is in, in the in the chat saying it's the star citizen pickup truck and i couldn't agree it more. is we, we 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 call it the space suit you know, now now that I think of it, you know, uh, the Nomad. You know, when you look at the shape of it, it, it kind of looks like the Tesla Cybertruck. Oh my God! It's, it's got kind of like I, that. I that would edge. say in that case, yeah, I will say the Cybertruck is giving Nomad a bad name. Uh, from what I saw, yes. <laughs> but but to be fair, I I don't really keep up with with car. Come on, news. come come on, Mister Musk, sort it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So okay, so that's your underrated ship, and that's do my you have a ship that, that you think uh, needs some love from CAG? Like CAG have forgotten about it, and they should come back to it and uh, and do something about it. Freelancer, the whole freelancer series, man. I I adore them. I love them. I know a lot of people do not like their interior, but I somehow just I I love the big dashboard in front of me. I love the way the switches are designed and somehow Freelancer Max Max of, of all of them is one of my very favorite ships. Again, very, very capable ship, but it's very old and very agey. Uh, the panel gaps are like... Max is like a new variant. That's, uh... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, th th but... th It's true what you said about the dashboard. I, I generally like the, the canopy design hmm. on and dashboard design on misc ships the the only one that really goes out of that standard is the prospector because that kind of has that bubble yeah on it but that's that's because that's you beautiful. should see the mining laser that's that's what i wanted yeah but but you know the maybe the you go ahead maybe you know more about this i do not remember maybe i read somewhere that you know the misc odyssey Yep. which will be coming eventually. So I maybe I heard it wrong uh, that that's the new freelancer look that they want to implement to every single MISC ship. Is that true or is that... I, did I, re I haven't heard of this. I, I would assume... Okay. Uh, I would assume that the intended design language for MISC was started with the Hull A. And it was sort yeah. of solidified with the Hull Hull C, mm -hmm. and I think that's what they're going to go for. So I think the freelancer is mm -hmm. going to look more like the Hull Hull A in the future mm -hmm. when, they, when they do the gold standard. And they are actually doing something with the freelancer in three twenty three, but I think they're only doing oh. a components re components, on, yeah, uh, because it doesn't have accessible components yeah. right now. It has a beautiful floor, by the way. If it you, does. it does. I, I know. <laughs> yeah, As, you know. I like my ships. I buy one ship and I really love it. So I look at its yeah. all the design language, and it has a beautiful floor. Like, <laughs> no, I I also look at all these like little elements in there. And, yeah, and I think like this. Usually, I think this this makes no sense. 
that's my usual <laughs> response to, to ships in Star Citizen. Uh, but, with... but also, I do not understand what is the purpose of that small compartment in the middle with the doors. Like, that's just wasted of space. Like, you so, know what I mean? Like, it's very hard to move stuff there. Two things on there. One, it's supposed to kind of have yeah. high value cargo, supposedly. It it had a sign in there at some point. And two, there was an airlock yeah. at the top. There or airlock. There was a. Wow. Well, okay. 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 So it's like a docking. dual chamber. Yeah, it's like a sort docking, of yeah docking area. Uh, but the docking never... areas are really weird in Star Citizen. Like, look at what they're on. I don't know how Raft will ever dock. <sighs> yeah, you know, I love the Raft. <laughs> I love the Raft. It's beautiful. Yes, it's a beautiful ship, and it is very functional. Yeah. My only yeah. comment on the raft is they need to make the mole use the same chassis. That's my only comment on mm. it. Uh, yeah, okay. Th no, the raft it, is great. It, it makes way more sense to have the mole use the same chassis, in, in my opinion. Uh, they would have to... The turrets can stay where they are because the docking <laughs> or you know the airlock doesn't interfere with the position if you put them side by side. All they would have to do is cancel the middle turret and move the laser controls to the cockpit, essentially, and make it a remote mic uh, turret. Do you think cargo capacity-wise, Argoroft is in a good place? Because what is... Okay, I don't know the history of this ship. What is the intended purpose? Like, everybody says the functionality is not there yet for the raft. So, um, the raft... What is that out of that? They said it, I think John Cruz said this, that the raft was released sooner than it should have been because they had the raft done, but they didn't have the mechanics for it. And the, What are those mechanics? So the, you know how it has the big cargo containers in the yeah. back? Yeah. That's the yeah. purpose. So you can just come in, you have three 32 SCU containers, you drop them, pick up new ones, you're gone in five minutes. That's what it's supposed to do. So it's supposed to be this kind of like ferry of sorts of large cargo containers between two points because you can do it will, way faster than any other ship. Will it work with the new cargo refactor they're doing? Does does it fit into that? I'm going to say yes. Uh, the only problem uh, with it right now is that my understanding is that the cargo clamps are supposed to move. They're supposed to go down mm. to the floor. Mm. And they don't do that right now. So right now, it is a little bit difficult to stack boxes in there. Uh, but once they kind of resolve that, I, I think it's going to be pretty reasonable. I don't think it's necessarily going to be faster, uh, but it's definitely mm. going to be easier. Unique, too. It will be unique yep. way of, like, you're flying a container cargo ship. I think we need more ships from Argo, uh, more orange ships in the wars. Yeah, I, I think Argo is kind of a underappreciated manufacturer. I, mm. I, I definitely think we need more ships, but the the problem with Argo is that it's an industrial manufacturer, right? Yeah. And CAG yeah. are not really releasing industrial ships because you need a gameplay loop for that and yeah. most industrial gameplay loops either don't exist or they're mm. so small that they can't fit another ship. It's like, imagine mm -hmm. they released another mining ship, like an Argo mining ship. Well, we yeah. have one because we have the Argo. We're mole. Yeah. But we the, need a salvage ship basically from yeah. Argo. Yeah, so if you did a salvage ship from Argo, uh, what would it do? Uh, how do you make it well, better than the Vulture? The, or how do you make it different this than is the Vulture? This, this is the question for CIG ship developers, really. Like what, what, Because eventually what it should be is that every manufacturer should have one ship in every single category. So that's your design choice like in real life right i mean i, I mean do, do you think that reflects on real life like th does every car manufacturer have a car for everything well mostly they do most well these do. days everybody's just making a four-wheel drive so <laughs> these days it's just sports utility vehicles true, but true. Um, but uh. but it did do Mo a majority i mean uh yeah i mean i Give me one example. Tell me, hey, this car only makes this. 
you will be able to, but it's not easy to come That's come with some one. easy answers. I, you know, yeah, three years ago easy. I would say Jaguar, but now they also have an SUV. No. They also have an they SUV. They do, now, yeah. So. They don't just just don't make trucks, is all. Yeah. Um, you know, like certain truck companies only make trucks, but yeah. so that's sort of, but it's a game. But but then again, they're having very specific design languages for different vehicle manufacturers. What will be the point of that if you don't yeah. actually provide that choice? The, you know, like okay, we have a that you touched on with the design languages. Uh, I think that is actually the problem with a lot of ship manufacturers. That is that they don't have a properly defined design manual, especially for... They, they'll get there. They'll get there. Mm. They got it for mm. RSI now. Uh, that's why, mm. I don't know if, if you heard of this, but that's why Polaris got so delayed because they started working on it. And same for the BMW, mm. actually. Uh, they started working mm. on it. Yeah, yeah, that I know. Yeah, and, and they realized like, oh, well, you know, we really don't know how, how this manufacturer is going to do this. So mm. they started making steps in between. So hmm. for, for RSI, you know, they put out the Arastra, the Galaxy. So they would hmm. learn how to do this stuff. And now they're working on the Polaris and, and they might actually get it done this year. I, I believe that they might hmm. be able to get it done this year. It's a fantastic yeah. era. Um, but it is this is but this is what actually excites me like because origin is like bmw very curvaceous beautiful luxury yes but they do have 100i they do have their you know those kind of ships too i i want to see what kind of a salvage ship origin is going to make i'm very interested in seeing that you know, you know i'm very like interested yes yeah. I, 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 I want to see an origin either carrier or an origin <laughs> refinery. That's what I would like to yeah. see. I, hey, I want to see what a Crusader comes up with for a salvage ship. What what does Crusader do for a for a mining ship? That's what I want to see. see that, I mean that exactly that is where thing. things will become very interesting. I, I don't understand why we don't have more industrial crusader ships. I, oh uh, can I tell you something very cool? Go ahead. Okay, so I met this guy on while I was doing a Twitch stream, okay. um, and we were just shooting, right? And so this guy plays Star Citizen in a very different way, which is which is how it should be played. Okay. So he, what he has is because he has got so much money in game right now, he's got ships on every station, same ships. So he's got multiples of every single ship. So he's got like. Six cutty blacks, six hundred eyes, six six four hundred eyes, and <laughs> six six hundred eyes. Like the and he had them scores on on X when I asked about. <laughs> med no, I was talking about like features that we need, and the guy was like, "Oh, you know, I avoid uh, having to go to the hospital by having a Pisces rescue in in every <laughs> landing zone." Every. <laughs> Yeah, but but he goes way above that. He's like, and I was like, don't you? Okay, I was like, that that is a that is actually how I would play. Yes, that makes total sense. That's a very Save real every ship at every, every station. And, and I, I respect that. Space. He has a different skin for different stations. <laughs> I mean, how else are you it's, gonna know where to park okay. what? It, yeah, his his microtech ships are all white. The, if if it has a snow breaker or whatever that skin is called, all of his ships on Microtech has that skin. Okay, yeah, Larville are all black or darker shades. Crusader, all blue skins, the icebreaker skin. You guys might I'm think like, that this is wow. completely insane, but you know what? I, I actually <laughs> I actually understand this. <laughs> I this would never do it, in. but but it makes perfect sense. And then in Scrapyard was, was in, so in chat saying that we need a huge uh, RSI salvage ship. Um, oh, yeah. That, that, would, yeah. that would work. But they, hey, they hold on. Arastra is, uh, Arastra is, is that a, oh, that's a, that's a mining ship, that's isn't a mining it? That's ship. a removing, removing they, they refinery. Have a, they have a lot of mining stuff. They got, mm -hmm. they got the Arastra and they have the Orion, the sort of mining. And, and, the, and the Odyssey. Odyssey is also a refinery, isn't it? The, the Miss. Uh, Odyssey is also a refinery. 
So the that's a refinery ship. Refinery is a bit of a contentious point. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe uh, I'm just. So yes, it is a refinery. Yeah, there you but go. But and Orion is what brand? To CIG. It can only refine quantanium, unless they backtrack that and because they, they will have to. Because the Odyssey, they concept it as, as, oh, it's an exploration ship that can mine its own fuel. Uh, well, so uh, this ship only makes sense once you have like 120 systems in the game. Yeah, uh, but I think they will eventually have to backtrack it uh, mm. and, and make it sort of be able to mm. refine everything and make it a less exploration ship, more of a prospector ship. So like yeah. you fly this into an area ahead yes. of the of the Arastra or the Orion and they kind of do Orion, a poking can, around. Can you tell me what brand Orion is? RSI. That's a, so Arastra is also RSI, yeah. Orion is also R. Yeah. I I would like to say Orion is not a very RSI name. Or is it? Oh it is because it is. they they go for the constellations. They go for yeah, the constellations. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, sorry. I, I keep so I keep getting confused with some of these things. Like th the two brands I confuse a lot are Anvil and Aegis. I really confuse them a lot. They're, like they're like they're very confusable. So I get it, but uh, yeah, the design languages. Yeah, yeah. versus and, uh, Reclaimer is underrated and needs love. I agree. The Reclaimer needs gold standard. Oh uh, come on, Reclaimer. It's... Yeah, what what I want for Reclaimer is to be brand spanking new when I buy it. I don't want to yes. see. Rust everywhere. But that's <laughs> like, that's a lot of older ships for some reason. Yeah. And I know we talked yeah. about this before. Yeah, uh, we did. A lot of we ships did. in Star Citizen, they, they kind of have this old look, and it's like, it's Reclaimer, it's the mm. Cuddy, it, it's, uh, it's the Connie's, Titan, Avenger Titan. Yeah, Avenger. It's the. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, the Vulture. Y you spawn it fresh out after reset, brand beautiful. spanking new. It's, it's, it's beautiful. <laughs> Vulture well, is such a beautiful ship. Yeah. Uh, on that note, you know, Drake ships, you know, on the Corsair, that little screen, that MFD that's on the floor, it, it irritates me. It's, it's <laughs> you, useless. You have, you and it's like, that did that you guys before. forget to assemble my ship? That's Drake. That's Drake for you. Oh, I'm, I'm thinking of the ways to destroy the Drake for the video we're doing. Uh, yeah. are, you, are you coming over? <laughs> so, yeah. Yes, that's... I, I think that's we just need definitely. to, you know... Oh, wait. I think we can, like, yeet it into the big smelter in Lorville. No, what? No, that that will... That, you're, you're, you're already killing so many different episodes for me. So this will escalate slowly, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, we're going to leave that one for... <laughs> I, I'm thinking of dropping a couple of big uh, cargo boxes on it, like... And I want to, yeah, so that's what I was thinking. I'll just drop a lot of cargo boxes on it. Speaking of which, guys, go check out Lens Nation. He's a great creator, makes a lot of <laughs> machinimas and, and a lot of very good content. He's kicking me to make better content. Uh, and also he redesigned the armory. Which, you know, since I have you, uh, are we going to show okay. off the armory? I don't think we sh should because I'm not on my PC. Uh... I'm on my cell phone. You, if you want to, man, it's your beautiful, beautiful baby. Please go ahead but and show it. Yes, you know, the, but... the preview as it is deployed, it's it's not the final version yeah. yet because we're going to sit down tomorrow yeah. and we're going to figure out... Can something. I also say, I have not slept tonight. I have no idea what's going to happen tomorrow now. That's okay. I'm very sorry. That's okay. I, I, yeah, I... I, uh, there is only two things that, that we need. Uh, okay. Number one is the thing that you made on stream that I, I am keeping secret. From everyone, yeah, that's Discord beautiful. Right now. No, have you seen it though? I have seen it. Did you see it? I have seen. I have seen. You like it? I watched the stream. I, I like it. Good. That's brilliant. It it, it looks really good. It yeah, looks very good. And and it it yeah. has a lot of sort of uh, mo not modularity, but you know what I mean. So we can style it. Yes, in different you ways. can dress it up in yeah. multiple ways. If you want to use it as a merch, this will sell, man. Oh, that's what I can we, tell you. We are doing merch. I, I am yep, that will I sell. am going to CitizenCon and I will pack my suitcase yeah. <laughs> as much as I can with armory merch. Okay. Very and good. Whoever... Also I I uh, would like to share we are going on a tangent, but um I would like to share that I shared your concept of data bounties while I was doing the helmet stream, okay. doing the helmet when I was the first design I made. Yes. 
made people liked it they were like oh nice. this is and the, immediately everybody was jumping to the same conclusion that i was when you told me about that that oh you can do so much more yeah. you know what i'm talking yeah, about i know i know <laughs> yeah and it's all going to be in the works uh, yes, but uh, we will not let you rest, sir. We will, we will not, not let you. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna take a bunch of small armory merch, and mm. I'm just gonna pack my suitcase full. I will bring it yeah. to CitizenCon, and whoever mm. comes to me first, like, "Hey, space coder," they have to yeah. until I run out. Yeah. And there's gonna be a lot of people yeah. there. I am like combing through Twitter. Yeah. And so many people I know are going. And I, I'm starting to yeah. feel a little bit nervous. <laughs> well, just, um, you know, take your pistol with you. <laughs> I, I don't think I can bring that on a plane. I, well, I, I could. But I don't I know, don't know, any, I don't know how many me. people got the joke, but... <laughs> uh, if you didn't, the if you didn't get that pistol, joke, go, okay. go, go watch... What was it? Was, was it the... <laughs> Go the nine tails video yeah the nine tails nine tails video uh, yeah. and the skip, second skip thing will get it he knows what i'm talking about second thing that we need is we need your logo to be at the bottom of the page saying this oh that's DC. we will yeah. we'll throw it in there somewhere yeah. but i was gonna uh push you to i've already said this before we should uh know that the things are very fresh in your brain you should do the second team as well. Yes. And it, that's an easier team to do, to be honest. But yes. it is very cool to have two teams to just flick on, flick on, flick off. Yeah, that, and, and if you do these two teams, uh, there are multiple variations we can create just around the colors where you just need to change yeah. the colors and we have a fresh look for the... I'm ring. going to work on that between the business trip for the next month. Yeah. Now, you have done a wonderful job. You have been very diligent and very fast space i think wonderful wonderful i'm very happy that it's, it's the lack of we, we did this it's that does great it. yeah <laughs> same i can feel it yeah. oh and back to underrated ships now <laughs> okay that that was a very long sorry man. sorry <laughs> yeah, it's, it's did you content. have uh, other callers on uh, is there anybody no, else no, no, waiting no, at it's, all it's just you today uh, oh fantastic i'm the king of king of the stream yeah, the, but the, we had a lot of people watching. We still have a lot of people watching. So, uh, that's great. Hey, everyone. This is, I am special because I'm from Australia. It's 2 a.m. in the morning, and I, I have made very special sacrifice today by not sleeping. <laughs> this was not planned. This was not planned. <laughs> oh, my God. But but I hope everybody is excited about the Armory's new look. Um, Maybe the... As you guys will be going away. Hey, a lot of people are watching. I, I, I think new demo. You should show them. You should show them a glimpse, man. Okay. Uh, I think they deserve to see it. Okay, Otherwise, okay, it's guys, too uh, much. So we are gonna. I'm just gonna make sure this works. Yeah, you need to screen create screen. the new screen on oh, OBS. I, I already yeah. set this up. I already set this up before I because I'm, I'm oh, yeah. I was gonna do the demo, uh, but I'm gonna do mm. it tomorrow once we're done. So, cool, are you guys ready? Uh, and it's going to be a very quick peek. And we're back. Sorry about that, folks. I I am an idiot. That's what happened. That's what happened. I, I'm an idiot. I set up the scene and I forgot to add the microphone uh, because I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, as I... Yeah, you, you could hear me because you're on Discord. 
so uh, as I was saying while well, you couldn't hear me, uh, so we moved a bunch of stuff around. Uh, one of the things is that gear images are now a, in a more prominent position. You can still toggle them, but you kind of see the option that it's it's there, uh, which I think is pretty important to see. Uh, also, generally, the, the the app looks different. The colors are a little more clean. The general theme is a lot more clean. Uh, and what else did we change? We didn't do like ma major layout changes. We just made it look nicer. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's the new armory. Uh, I am hoping to have this out by Tuesday because I leave on Wednesday. I'm, I'm going on a business trip for a month. Uh, so I'm hoping to have this out by then and in, in your hands. Uh, if not, then I'm... No, I'm, I'm going to make it. I'm, I, I am committed to, to making this, this happen. Uh, yeah. Oh, yes, do, do that. Yes. Yeah, there, there we go. Who knew? And, and he's going to have a lot of work to do in 323 because they're changing prices on everything. And I I need to confirm, but I think they actually changed the inventories on, on shops all over the place. Yeah, because I, I, I was at Port Tressler this morning and I couldn't find a thing that I usually get there. So maybe, maybe. We'll see. Uh Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, it's very easy. Yeah, see, that, that's the thing. So the, the whole data bounty system, I overbuilt the heck out of it, knowing that eventually it might be in its own thing. So I, I can really do anything. I just have to build the form for it. And, and that's it. So once I bas get the basic system in, so the accounts and the... Oh, that's what I forgot to say. Uh... There's gonna be an armory bot for notifications and letting you know how your thing, how your submissions are going. That's, I am, yeah, yeah. We will, I, I will hopefully be able to do that at some point soon. Uh, but yeah, uh, and actually for the reason, those of you who didn't know that armory does this. So if you select the core, it will fill out the whole armor for you. That's. This has been around for a very long time. A lot of people don't know that this this is in there. Uh, just kind of a little cool feature that that, that I did a, a very long time ago. And actually, the whole page now looks different. So this has a slightly better layout, more readability to it. Uh, same with the loot. We made things a little bit clearer in places. Though I think this might be better if it merges into two columns, but uh, that's very easily changeable. Yeah. Oh, we can do that. That's uh, it. Yeah. I, I actually have stickers. At, at some point I made stickers with there was like the armory logo. And it says like, this item has been approved by the quartermaster general get, get yours at armory.space space. Because that's what someone called me that. Uh, Paul Shelley called me that on on the on the Astro Pub. Oh yeah, you can only hear uh, you can you can't hear Lens because I forgot the other thing, which is. Oh. There we go. Now, now you can. Sorry hear guys, I was. Yeah, well, this, I was this is what happens when I set up screens as as I go. Uh, I forget shit. Uh, anyway. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, what was I saying? Right, so Paul Shelley on on the Astro Pub uh, called me that once, and it stuck. He called me the Quartermaster General, and it stuck. Oh, yeah. uh, that's so, good. Yeah, that's a good good name to be stuck on someone. That's good. Yeah, you know, I, I considered renaming myself, but I was like, you know what, this this pace coder is, is who I am. <clears throat> that name has a, yeah. a way a way funnier backstory, but I I, I can't. Say that backstory on YouTube because I'm I'm gonna get demonetized. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Oh, uh, no, so, it's so that uh, was the new already. Uh-huh. I, I think even I don't know if you have found it, but he, like if you use the new armory, I know you will discover it when you start using it. It is very, very flowy. It's very functional. It's very clean. It is actually pleasing. I think it's the like okay. I'll be very open here. My favorite tool in all Star Citizens Wars is the Wars Guide. Yes. That's my favorite. That is just absolutely beautiful to look at. Absolutely dream to work with. Uh, and I also like Urkel. But Urkel I have not used in a long time because the components just disappear for me every single time whenever there's a patch. So I haven't I've stopped upgrading. And and now Armory is up there, man. Yeah. With its UI. That's what I want to say. It's so good. It's so well done. It's I, I love it. And well, you have you made really this. coded I, I do, would man. be shocked if you didn't like it. <laughs> no, it was both our input. I suppose we we spent a lot of time col- fixing the colors, which colors we want. Uh, sure. But a, a design is only good enough until a coder actually cords it well, and you you didn't miss a pixel. So that's yeah. hats off to you. Yeah, that, that's kind of the framework that I'm using. It's it's making it sometimes very obtrusive to do certain things mm. uh, but once you kind of figure out the way it's it's so easy and it just just flows and then it's you know great. swapping colors it's it's gonna be very easy i don't know how difficult mm. it's gonna be to make a toggle for it uh that in all fairness oh. uh but i no I but you said you can make themes so you can at the back end just flip a theme yeah. you know so like I, we I can, can have a different theme for invictus so that's yeah. have a pink theme for Coramore. Yeah. That's what I'm looking forward to. Just <laughs> replace the top header image on the right hand side. That's the idea. We can put a heart in there. When an Invictus comes, we can put the Invictus logo in there. That's the modularity I wanted. You know, like like we can have our own themes and stuff. Yeah. We can do our you should celebrate Armory Happy Birthday or something, you know, the name day. Yeah. Uh like Fallout has just dropped on Netflix, celebrate that. Put the Fallout logo up there. <laughs> Can we do that? I think that's a copyright violation. Oh, I don't think. I think it goes into popular culture media. You just put it in there and then remove it after a few days. Yeah. I, I don't know. I don't know. Keep, keep things fresh. <laughs> what a fantastic, what what a great job you've done. I think this is great. Very excited with this. Me, Very excited. I, I was just writing code deep, deep into the and, night. And also, space, we totally forgot but we forget? absolutely forgot to talk about the armory when we were recording our episode. We talked about it. Did we talk about it? Did we talk about the new design? No, we didn't talk about the new design. No, we did not. We I don't even think we have talked about armory. But we we talked about it. But we kept it on 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 topic for for Yeah, no. So we we will re-record that bit, I suppose it um because uh yeah, I'll, I I can show the clips as well. I, we I promoted the calm relay, but we did not promote the armory there. The I don't. Relay. We mentioned the armory. Yeah, we need to enhance armory a little bit more. You, 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 so you're asking we'll questions that. that are memory based, and my memory is not very good. <laughs> uh, also, it looks like it's it has suddenly become more of our Discord chat now, like what we do. Yes, than the, than a live stream chat. I'm sorry. You know, I, I think people find it entertaining. Anyway, I'm going to switch us back to the guest screen. Yeah, don't back. forget your microphone. Don't forget your microphone. Okay, do you want to talk about ships more? Or I, I'm, I can talk or, or I can leave. Not, not a problem with me. I, I mean, you know, let's let's talk for a little bit longer because then I have to catch dinner yeah. and the staff meeting. Okay, brilliant. Okay, cool. So when we are talking about underrated ships, right? Yeah. I also think Hundred Eye is very underappreciated. I think I see it here and there because it's a starter ship, so people buy it. Uh, but it's not very, it's not that appreciated. It's such a sleek ship, very nimble, great handling, lands anywhere, and very low maintenance. That ship, you know, I think with the One Hundred Eye, uh, it's a similar situation to. Jason, Jason, don't worry. I, I, I'm keeping track of it <laughs> because I have to be there too. Uh, so with the 100i, I think it's a similar problem to the raft, right? Because the 
<laughs> main point of the one her die the, the thing that it's built around is the adaptive intake refinery air, air, yeah that it it makes its own fuel yeah. from air or something yeah yeah so uh, I mean, so all ships are supposed to do this. So every, almost every ship besides light fighters, I think, uh, has mm. fuel scoops. Uh, the oh, it's the isn't it the origins patent technology or yes. so and so? So yeah, the one hundred. All the origin ships are supposed to do that. Mm, I don't know if all origin ships are supposed to do it, but apparently, so every ship besides some exceptions should have fuel scoops. And with the one hundred mm. I CAG, did a Q and A where people asked how this is going to work. And the answer at the time was you capture the hydrogen particles with the fuel scoop and then then gets converted into various types of plasma fuel. And depending on what was the intake material, you get different amounts and different qualities. And apparently the uh, 100i system is supposed to be very good at this so you're supposed to be able to go without refueling and scrapyard word says terrapin and i fully agree uh terrapin they need to rework oh. the heck out of it and they need to make it a proper proper two-seater what is the what is the thing with one chair in the terrapin what is that about with the what there's one single chair in the middle of terrapin uh, so that's the right scanner the station back. I don't even know anything about Terrapin. I just know it's a tank. And I like it. So it's supposed to be sort of a scouting slash exploration ship. So it's supposed to go ahead of military forces. That was the original intent. But apparently it's also good for exploring areas. That's why it's so armored. And it's supposed to be sort of stealth also. Uh, And it's supposed to be a single seater where when you're in the location yeah. where you want to scan you go to that chair that looks like you're going to get interrogated by the inquisition and <laughs> yeah, scan from there you, yeah. you kind of have the scanning ui <clears throat> i think what cag needs to do is just make it a proper two-seater you know I, I... the so so i have not bought the therapy in game yet and um i only had it twice during free flies and i really loved it yeah, uh, great... did some uh, bounties and stuff and it would it just wouldn't die yeah. and so i really liked it but i just didn't understand what what was so when i will buy it in game i will actually learn everything about it but at this stage i'm just um yeah but i uh, there's a lot of love for terrapin out there also i was blown away how by how good harold is yes that ship is great the terrapin is the only reason I participate in the referral program because at some level in the referral program you get a terrapin. That's that's the only reason. Terrapin or Herald? Terrapin. Herald is not in there. Oh, okay. So that's the only reason oh. I participate in uh, in the referral program at all. And as Adrian Gray points out, yeah, the terrapin gameplay loop is not in game. I mean, technically, mm. you do have scanning and the scanning mode. Yeah. And Scan. technically, in, in 323, you technically can save marker locations. I don't think you can share yeah. with people. So you could technically mm. find something, save the location, like find some deposits of ore and f- make, you know, mark that location and then guide someone in there. Could but but you don't need a terrapin for this. But yes, the the whole exploration, pathfinding, and general gameplay you would associate with uh, <clears throat> the terrapin is not there uh, because I think the expanded scanning mechanics it ties a lot into data running. That's where the herald comes yeah. in, for example, because the herald is supposed to be this kind of like data interception data platform, essentially. It, uh, uh, we don't even know when we're gonna get that game, or we even if we're gonna get that game loop because I think that has been they've I mean, been they, very they quiet have, about that. They have a lot of ships that are capable of it mm-hmm. because they got the Herald, yeah. the MSR, they got yeah. the uh, Vanguard Sentinel is is also supposed to have some e warfare and data it's running all... capabilities. Uh, so so they have a couple ships that that are dying into that and they are mm. 
they have referred to it at times. I think it's just something that's not in active development. It's something that's not yet properly concepted, essentially. That, that's why they're not really implementing this or sort of putting out more information. That's why I don't think we have another data running ship. Uh, I, I would like to see a uh, Anvil flying server. Just like, oh, <laughs> you know, oh sure, sure. Yeah, you know, something just like fast, but with just yeah. full of, of servers for data running, or like an antenna for like skimming I, I, com relays. That I, I just don't understand the gameplay though. Like, what, what? I, it's very hard for me to vision what the gameplay is going to be. Like, what, what do you do? Is it like a mini game? And Carter has a kind of you... exactly. So, what the gameplay yeah. for this is going to be? <clears throat> I think tier zero or maybe tier one data running is going to be you come to a location, you go to a console in that location, and it's going to say, <laughs> okay, you have a ship connected. That ship has this much memory capacity on it. Would you like to copy trade information on this location? You copy it. It takes a little bit of time to, to copy. Uh, and then you have it on your ship. Then you go back to some landing zone, like you go to a trade development, you know, trade exchange. You go there, there's going to be a console. It's going to be, okay, you have these ships at, at this location. Oh. You click on the ship and it says, okay, this ship has this data from this location. Would you like to sell this data? And depending on how far away that location is, how relevant, it, how old the data is, and how relevant to ongoing trade that location is, it's going to give you some amount of money. That, that's going to be data running tier zero, in, in my opinion. That's like, how is that any different from cargo running? You just It's not. Uh, but uh, right? CJ have said this, uh -huh. the data is just cargo. It, it just needs a different infrastructure to work with. Uh, <laughs> just, yeah. So that's okay. my thing. And, and they're going to build upon it. Okay. With illegal gameplay, mostly, we're going to be trying to steal data. So it's going to be infiltration, hacking, data running triangle, essentially. So you go somewhere, like data centers, distribution centers. You go in there, you infiltrate yeah, okay. it, take data from the server, you go, and then, then that's valuable in some way. So you go and, and sell it to a, a black market data broker. Like, oh, it's a new prototype for something. <laughs> For Hurston Dynamics, oh yeah, that's that's valuable. But you know, it's a very high risk gameplay. You have to get there. They can't find you. You have to. There's a lot of direct. What I can imagine that what they can do with this is like they can have, like you know, the bunkers have servers, and we are already doing some data, different type of data missions there. So maybe that can be tied into it. Like you can actually do do the bunker, right? And you can also steal the information yeah. from the bunker, put it in your ship. Yeah, that's maybe a little bit high value because you actually had to and, fight and the nine tails. That's, that's where you know the herald also comes in because you mm. you can just kind of like park it nearby and just wait. So they could this could be a higher tier gameplay where you they have talked about this mm. like intercepting data streams. So oh, you yeah, basically yeah. park it in the location and, and then kind of look for where the bursts of traffic you're you're are, are wow. going through. And, and then you go there and you gain some information. So th there, Quantum there's a lot economy. they could do with this, essentially. Uh, yeah. you, do you know how long-range comms work in Star Citizen? Like how oh, do you no, communicate man, no. over a jump point? In generally any long... Nope. So uh, the way to get messages through a jump point, like get data through a jump point in Star Citizen, because it's way mm -hmm. too far, right, to send via radio or whatever. Uh, so mm -hmm. they load the data onto a probe and they yeet the probe into the jump point. And it comes out okay. on the other hand, on the under end. They catch it, they download the data, and, and it it gets passed on. Okay. So they okay, that kind of have this like messenger system. So that, and that's going to be the other thing in data running, in my opinion, is like, oh, we need this delivered. Like this data needs yeah, to be delivered to that, yeah. quickly. So you load it and you have a time limit. You have like, oh, you have 15 minutes to get this, you know, from Stanton to Odin or whatever. Yeah. So a lot of stuff you can do, do there. Hmm. Yeah. 
And, and I think I that's think interesting. You're, I think you're getting sleepy. I hope I do. <laughs> I hope I am. <laughs> I just want to. My tomorrow is destroyed, man. I didn't do anything. They like, just been awake for like, oh my god. Yeah, who needs to do Not things? Good. <clears throat> who needs to do things anyway? Uh, if I didn't have migraines, I would be okay. But I suffer from migraines, so I feel you there. And now I'm in a potential danger there, like tomorrow. So I can't do anything tomorrow either. So uh, and you don't even drink we'll coffee. See. So it's like you're you're screwed. I don't. You're, you're screwed. Everywhere. Very bad. Yeah. 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 And but this was a very good discussion. I finally, yeah. I was able to jump on your odd time stream. Oh, yeah, well, it's, <coughs> yes, essentially. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we showed very up for me. so that's so that that's always good. Uh, great man, just, it was meant to be, I suppose. So, right. oh, thank you, you for chatting for so Absolutely. long, and um, thank you for being. Thanks to everybody for listening. Yeah, uh, for to the trends and over tangents. <laughs> I think you know. I think that's what the show is about at this point. Yeah, at <laughs> like, this point, just, just just space coder waffles on about things in an empty room. <laughs> you should call these streams intercepted com relays. Like, you know, it's a, I, I feel like someone's gonna clip that and send that to my therapist. <laughs> <laughs> intercepted com relays to the engines. Oh, it was pleasure, man. It was, it was fun. Thank you so much hey, for bringing me in. Absolutely, anytime. You, you know, you're always welcome on, on the com relay. Yes, yes. Cool, man. Yeah. I'll see myself yeah. out. Right. Carry Thank on. You. Have a good okay. night, man. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I have about 30 minutes until I have to go to a staff meeting with Alice Defense Industries, which, if you didn't know, is my organization that I... I have been in for many years. Uh, go check out their, their website. It's linked in the description. Uh, we're a very cool group. Anyway, uh, so I, I, I'm going to go now, grab some dinner, grab something to drink, uh, and get ready for that. So with that being said, uh, that will be all for today. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you all for chatting. I hope to see more of you as guests on the next show. Um, on that note, uh, sort of a public service announcement. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm, I'm going to be away for a month on a business trip. Uh, so the show's not going to happen for four weeks or five weeks. Uh, but I worked very hard today and I'm going to work a little more hard uh, tomorrow. So there's going to be a video uh, coming out on Monday uh, as usual, uh, as you would expect from me. Uh, I That's the least I can do. Uh, I will be working on the armory in the meantime because what the heck else am I going to do in a hotel room? Uh, and yeah, thank you all for joining us. Uh, thank you all for chatting. Uh, thank you all for uh, bearing with me while I waffle down about random things. Thank you for bearing with my squeaky chair uh, that I am unable to do anything about. Uh, and yeah, with that being said, thank you all for watching. Fly safe, and I will see you in the verse. Good night. <laughs>